Hello and welcome to the Older Adult Podcast. I am Dr. Samantha Chamberlain, a TA within the ICE Older Adult Division, and this is brought to you by the Institute of Clinical Excellence. So tonight I'm continuing on a series that I started um, before the new year, and it's going over this article um, called Meeting the Growing Demand for Age-Friendly Care, Healthcare at the Crossroads. It was um, put out by uh, the John A. Hartford Foundation, Age Wave, and the Harris Poll. So if you join me for part one, we talked about um, trans, like the um, the specific one we're talking about is the five forces disrupting and transforming healthcare today. Part one was regarding the the age wave, so this dramatic demographic shift with faster growing older adult population compared to younger po- population, and the social infrastructure that is just not ready to meet the demands of an older adult population, and what that looks like for healthcare, and what that looks like for mobility and function and all of those things. So um, we'll be covering uh, fragmentation, high cost and inequity in healthcare, healthcare work for shortages, advances in medical sciences such as AI and healthcare delivery in future in, in future episodes. Today we'll be pretty short, but one of my favorite topics and it's a soapbox that I can really get onto and it's the health span lifespan gap. So just like last time, I'm going to read the snippet um, or read that part of the article to you guys so that you guys, it's pretty short, um, but so you guys can see where this soapbox come from and then give you the the too long didn't read breakdown takeaways from it. So longevity has been one of the greatest success stories of the last century. Life expectancy in the U.S. rose from 47 to 77 years, but progress has recently stalled due to increasing deaths from COVID-19 overdoses, suicides, and chronic conditions, including heart disease, liver disease, and diabetes. Life expectancy peaked at 78.9 years before the pandemic and has since retreated to 77.5 years. While the United States spends more per capita on healthcare each year than any other country, we don't have overall public health performance to show for it. Today, America ranks 50th in terms of lifespan. That's five years behind Canada, seven behind Switzerland, and eight behind Japan. Most important is the companion measure of health span or health adjusted life expectancy. The number of years people can expect to live free of disability. In health span, America ranks 68th. So 50th overall, 68th in terms of health span in the world. And on average, adults in the US spend the last 12 years of their lives coping with poor health. Many factors can undermine health span, chronic health conditions, functional limitations, lifestyle factors, including lack of sleep, exercise, and nutrition, and social detriments of health, including economic stability, education, neighborhood, social isolation, and healthcare access and quality. 85% of adults age 65 and older have at least one chronic condition. Two thirds have two or more chronic conditions. The impact of functional limitations is often under-recognized, with nearly 20% of older adults reporting having a lot of difficulty in one or more of the basic areas of function, seeing, hearing, mobility, communication, cognition, and self-care. Limited mobility is the most common. Unfortunately, despite continual medical technology and treatment advances, our health spans are not improving. The health span lifespan gap places additional pressure on the capacity of the health system to serve older adults. More people need more treatment and care for more extended periods. This should be a wake up call. Closing the health span lifespan gap should be an urgent priority. It presents an opportunity to conserve capacity, reduce costs and raise the quality of life for older adults and their families. Side note, I don't know about you guys, but I would be really happy to boost my quality of life for the last 20% of it. Closing the gap will require effort on multiple fronts, including earlier detection and more effective treatment of infectious disease and conditions common in older adults, including heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, cancer, and dementia. More focus on supporting older adults with functional limitations, including mobility. More comprehensive and holistic approaches to health addressing the behavioral, social, and environmental factors that can impact health span, lifespan, and access to health services. There was a quote included in this article, just as like a side picture that says, we don't focus enough on helping people age well. We simply focus on treating chronic diseases. That was John White. He's an MD and chief medical officer for WebMD. Um, but that, that 
little excerpt that they put right there was just such a, like exactly how I feel and a soapbox I can get on for a really long time. We don't focus enough on helping people age well. We simply focus on treating chronic disease. It's that whole sick care model that if you've been around ice very long, that you know that we're preaching, like, let's get on offense. Let's, let's do preventative care. Let's be healthier individuals overall. So the, the takeaways from this is America spends a lot on healthcare without much to show for it at all. So lots of money going in to show nothing. Like, where's that money going to? Because it's certainly not to creating a healthier aging population, that's for sure. Or ways to prevent these chronic diseases, which we know is very possible. Instead of coping for the last 12 years or the last 20% of your life, let's thrive. That whole live long, die fast model, like, let's do that. This idea of coping just to cope just doesn't sound great. Um, we know that that, that curve, we, people are happier in older adulthood, but what if we could be happier and more capable than ever before? Like, what if we don't have to live with functional disability? And what if we can live with, with independence and age in place and still continue doing the things that we love to do? I think it's very possible. How, though? Um, I mentioned it in this short article. It comes down to the meds, the mindfulness, exercise, diet, sleep, like those lifestyle behaviors and we have to be the ones that lead that, but as, as well as like demonstrate and show and provide this patient education because we spend so much as, as rehab providers and fitness providers, we spend the most time with these individuals of any healthcare type provider. So if we can start one, demonstrating that this is how we're living our lives, but also really educating a little at a time, because if you gave someone all this information at once, it's too much, but if you start planting those seeds and, and letting those ideas grow and letting them ask questions and come to you when they're ready for those lifestyle behavior changes a little at a time, then we're making a dramatic impact, not just in that moment, but long-term, lifelong, generational. I'm, I've been on this like generational health kick as far as like, what good habits can I pass on to my children? What healthy eating th habits? What movement habits? What sleep patterns can I help start diving into now that lasts long beyond me, right? Like we, we need to be thinking of this like way beyond ourselves. So, you know, doing those lifestyle behaviors along with support with 85% of people 65 and older having at least one chronic condition and two thirds of them having two or more, we've got to figure out one ways to start pushing that into aging. Like I want to see it be 85% of 70, 75, 80 year olds have one chronic condition and two thirds at 90 and older, maybe have two, you know, so we can start moving the bar. I'm not saying we're going to abolish it altogether, but definitely start pushing it later into life instead of having this last dozen or so years of your life being filled with possible multiple comorbidities. And then 20% having difficulty with one or more basic functions. Of course, this is great where rehab providers can, can really shine um, because the number one is, is mobility deficits. And so if we can hone in and, and really get to know our older adults, like say you have someone in there that's had an injury and then you start finding out that they've been having difficulty with some of these things for a long time, then you can start working towards that. You can show them that there's hope. You can teach them ways to navigate in the now, but also start working towards rehabilitating that and making them stronger, healthier adults to be able to not have all these functional deficits, creating a lot more difficulty in life and, and requiring more effort in their day to day. So 20% having difficulty with one or more basic functions, we can address that. We can advocate for lifestyle behavior changes. We can support our cities and our towns and our states with age-friendly um, infrastructure. Like anytime you hear anything about that, just, just try to be a voice in, in the crowd or, or create a crowd that is, is promoting, you know, ADA compliance things, um, making it easier for people to get on and off of buses, creating infrastructure for there to be public transportation in your towns. Like I live in rural America. There's not a lot of easy ways to get from A to B as far as public transportation goes, you got to have a friend that has a car or someone that, you know, that can drive you places or have that transportation set up. And it's not always easy to get. So I think that's one of transportation is one of the big ways in my area that we need to really be pushing some of these helping people age in place and navigate the world around them without having to have as much um, 
burden, so to speak, on on either their families or or the people around them. Because I know a lot of my patients are like, I didn't want to bug so and so, or I hate having to ask for a ride, or you know, there's these different things that they feel bad about and don't want to bug people more often than they have to. And you know, usually the people that's helping, they, they don't see it as being bugged. They care about these people and they want to help, but. Also, a lot of people just don't like asking for help, but we want to be supportive. We want to promote that. Um, we want to support a supportive community and just really rally around aging because I want to be an older adult and I want to have have my tribe with me to make that easier. Um, and I also just want to be stronger to make sure that it is easy and we have to promote that and get people li living those lives. So like I said, a little bit short. Um, it was a, just about a page article. Next uh, time I'm on here for the podcast will be part three, which is fragmentation, high costs, and inequity in healthcare. So that should be another interesting topic. I'm really loving this uh, article that, that got posted. So been diving into that. If you want to catch us live, we have a few courses coming up. There's one February 22nd in Gretna, Louisiana. I believe it's by New Orleans. There is two in March MMOA Live courses, older adult courses. Uh, March 15th is going to be in Sparks Glen Club, Maryland. Uh, March 22nd is going to be in Lamont, Illinois. And then we have L1 and L2. So we are currently right in the middle of both those courses for the January cohort. We have L1 kicking off again March 17th. So if you're interested, if you've taken our courses or haven't taken our courses, that's a great one to get started with, whether you've had live or not had any. L1 is where you want to start at. So that's March 17th. And then uh, L2, the, the, the second one that you can you have to have completed L1 to do is May 15th. So please join us, sign up for those, and uh, dive into this conversation. What do you guys think about health span, lifespan gap? It's a pretty big gap. Uh, something I didn't mention because it wasn't in the article, but it's in this chart that I did want to bring up is, is this total lifespan for, for men and women. So total lifespan considered 80 years. 65 of those years are considered a healthy health span, like you have a good health. 14 of those years, you're living with some sort of chronic disease or mobility disability. Total lifespan for men is, is marked at 74 years, with 63 years being healthy and 11.1 .1 years being in that having some sort of health issue going on. Um, so our health spans and our lifespans aren't matching, and I would really like to start closing that gap. And I think we're poised in a perfect position to start working on that. Chime in. What do you guys think about health span, lifespan?